Welcome back, I'm Brian, this is All Your Tech. If you've set up an Unraid server and you're wondering why the performance just isn't as good as you had hoped, it might be due to disk IO weight. Let's jump right in and talk about it. I was pulling my hair out trying to figure out what the performance problems were for my brand new Unraid setup. I had multiple different cache drives, I had some relatively fast spinning disks, and I just couldn't figure out why my CPU usage was always spiking to near 100% regardless of what I did and what I was running. It turns out it was disk IO weight. So first let's start with what is IO weight? IO weight, as the name sort of implies, is input output weight. And this is the amount of time that your CPU spends waiting for data from your disks in order to complete a process. So let's jump in and take a look at how we can identify this problem what the cause is behind it, and some interesting solutions that should help mitigate this on your own setup. We'll jump right into the Unraid dashboard, and specifically about midway down the page, you have this section of processor stats. This is gonna give you every single core of your processor and how it's performing. Now, one of the telltale signs of there being an IO weight problem is if you see one of your processor cores or multiple spike to 100% and sort of stay there for a few seconds especially if you're not running anything particularly CPU intensive. Now, my processor stats look pretty healthy here, so if you're not seeing anything on here, you might wanna to jump to the next section. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the console. Now, if you go back up to the top of the screen, there's this little icon here in the upper right-hand corner, it's called Terminal, and we're gonna go ahead and click on that. Now, when you pull up the terminal, you're gonna be greeted by this sort of blank prompt, and you can simply type top. Top is a program that just pulls up a bunch of information about the running processes that are going on in your system. So right across here, we can go three rows down and we can say percent of CPUs, and we're using about 48% of our CPU. That's user system. It has a whole bunch of different statistics, but the one we care about is right over here next to WA, and this is IO weight. And you can see about three, two, three percent of the time, our processor is waiting for input output. Again, data coming from the disk going into the CPU. Now, when your system is performing badly, you might see a huge number here. You might see it at 80, 90%, maybe even 100%. And that's telling you that you have a disk IO weight problem. And that's something you can address, fortunately, fairly easily. So we'll go ahead and jump back out of the terminal. Let's jump from the dashboard over to shares. Now, shares are what you set up to actually use as your folders for your file system, essentially. So when you load up a Docker container or you add a new VM, you're gonna point it at one of these shares. So when we take a look at these shares, there are some configuration options and they're mostly having to do with cache. And caching with Unraid isn't the most intuitive thing in the world but I think we can step through it and make it make sense for you, hopefully a little bit easier. Now, Unraid has four different caching layers or caching mechanisms built into it, and you can see that by just drilling down into one of your shares here. So what you'll see is you'll have no, which as the name implies, no, nothing's cached. So this everything that gets written to this share gets written directly to your RAID array. You have yes, which yes, the data is cached, but what actually ends up happening is when something's written to the your system, it's written to the cache drive first. And then after it's written to the cache drive, once your mover process runs, it's gonna take those files from the cache drive and move them to the disk array. Prefer sort of does the exact opposite of that. It's gonna prefer to have everything cached on the cache drive. So writes are gonna happen to the cache drive and then if something happens to be on the array, when the mover runs, it's gonna move things from the array to the cache drive. And then finally, you've got only, and this means that the files only exist on your cache drive. They're only gonna get written to the cache drive and the mover isn't going to move them to the array ever. Now, this is a good thing to use for things like your system files, for example but it might not be such a good idea for things like your downloads that are coming in. Now going back to that main screen, we have different caching pools that you can set up with Unraid. In my case, I've got three separate caching pools. I have cache, 
download cache, and SSD cache. And these aren't the most clever names in the world, but they get the job done and they let me know what each one is being used for. Now, this is important because each of these cache drives actually has its own mount point, its own directory path to get to it. The reason that's important is because of something that happens with Docker and internally with Unraid. So if we go over to the Docker containers and we pull one of these open, we'll load up the Plex Pass one. This part here is really important. So you can see that we've got mount user media movies. This is the way Unraid sets up all the paths by default. It's mount user and then the share name. And the reason for this is that regardless of the caching level that you have, whether it's yes, prefer, or only, the system is able to determine where those files should go. And it does this with something called Fuse. And what Fuse does is it monitors for file system writes, and then it has this process which determines should this be written to the disk array or should this be written to one of the cache drives? The result of that is that for every single write to your system, there's an extra step, an extra process overhead that the system has to use and that adds up to this disk IO. So if you have a bunch of reads and writes coming in at the same time, and they should all be going to your cache drives, they're still going to be hitting that regular file system, it's gonna spin up your array and you have all this extra processing overhead. So this is what we're going to get rid of. So instead of using mount user media, well, that's a bad example, but if we scroll down further, we'll use a good example, I promise. So to illustrate and really drive this point home, I'm gonna open up Sonar, one of my Docker containers in here, and we're gonna to go to show more settings and this is the real important one. So app data, almost every one of your Docker containers, actually all of them are gonna have an app data share that it stores all the system files to for that actual Docker container. This is just where that Docker container uses as its kind of primary path. And by default, this path is going to be mount user app data and then whatever the name of the program is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change that to the cache path. So instead of mount user, which is gonna go through that fuse file system, have all that additional overhead that I just talked about, we're gonna go directly to the cache. And the way that we find the name of the cache drive that we need to go to is we'll jump back over to main and you scroll down here and you can see if you go over to one of your cache pools and you go to view, which is off on the far right hand side, you can't see it on my screen right now, but it's there and you click on that you're gonna see something cool here. So we'll go to the one that's marked cache. All right, so you'll see that it's, it's the directory path is actually mount cache. And we'll go back to one of my other drives and we'll go to the download cache. There's another one of my cache drives. And you'll notice that it is mount download underscore cache. So it's the name of the cache pool is the name of the path. If we go back again and we take a look at, let's say disk one in our array and we open that, you say mount, uh, this is disk two, mount disk two is the path. So again, mount user is just that overhead piece that the fuse file system uses to keep track of where the files should go. But really each one of these drives in your system, whether it's on the array or it's in your cache pool is individually addressable. That's important. So now we'll go back to our shares and we'll look at the ones that are set to only cache and to prefer cache. And in this case, we've got app data. It's set to go to only cache and it's set to go to the cache, cache pool. Downloads are set to prefer and they're set to go to the download underscore cache pool. So with that in mind, we'll jump back into Docker and I'll show you these little tiny changes that you need to make. So we'll start with Plex and we'll go to you don't wanna do the mount user media movies. You don't wanna change your media path here because this is written to the array. So this is fine to go through fuse. This is fine to leave as it is. But the one we do wanna change is if we go down to show more, you can barely see it. I'm gonna to have to sort of move my window a little bit. You see this bottom one here is app data. 
This is again the application directory. We're going to change that from mount user app data to mount cache app data because we saw that on the share screen it's going to my cache cache pool. We can go ahead and save that and now every time an app data path directory is written to it's going to skip all that extra overhead. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to jump into sonar and I'll show you the changes there. So sonar and radar and a bunch of other things, they have the downloads directory that they save everything to. And you can see here, I've changed that from mount user downloads to mount download underscore cache. Again, the exact same path that we found earlier. This is my cache pool for my downloads is download underscore cache. The last thing we're gonna do is again, go to show more settings. And then you can see that mount cache app data sonar. So we changed app data from mount user to mount cache. This is going to save you a ridiculous amount of overhead in your system. Your IO weight, as soon as you apply this, you restart the Docker containers, your IO weight is going to start dropping and then you can spend more time streaming movies or transcoding movies, running other bits of software that you want to run. You're not going to have all that crazy IO weight contention eating up all of your CPU resources. And that's the entire point of this. So with that out of the way, let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions whatsoever that I can help with. Otherwise, hit like and subscribe if this was helpful for more tips and tricks in future videos. Thank you all so much. Happy unrating, and we'll see you next time.